Did you know that there are an estimated 40,000 professional dog fighters and more than 100,000 street dog fighters nationwide? I'm Wolf from Justice Rescue and I fight for these animals that cannot fight for themselves. Animal fighting is sadistic and one of the most heinous crimes committed against animals. And animals can't ask for the pain and suffering of the abuse to stop. This is Remy. Remy was used in multiple dog fights before Justice Rescue saved him. If you suspect dog fighting or any form of animal abuse, report it. One moment, one voice, one phone call can change an abused animal's life. Speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. Your support today helps Justice Rescue continue to infiltrate dogfighting and all other forms of animal cruelty and neglect. And there's literally pits all the way along here. Deep in the rural south, a classic scene. A man and his dog out for a walk. But this isn't just any man, which is why he doesn't want you to see his face. This man has been a major player in the biggest illegal sport in America, dog fighting, which you may detest, but he loves with a passion. You step over that wall, you, you come into the pit, and then you feel out adrenaline rush. You do or the dog does? Dog's already got it. And you get it too? I'm getting it too. And I got a hold of him. And that referee says, release the dogs. And you turn him loose, and he goes over there like a freight train. I mean, he is, he comes over there, bam! Hey, <laughs> And then, they, then they're getting with it. And you're getting pumped up when you see this. This is what it's about. It's a secretive subculture that is more prevalent than you might think. These videos were shot by dogfighters across the country, from Florida to Texas, from Michigan to Arizona. They can be hard to watch, but not for the dogmen, as they call themselves, who say their animals love to fight because it's part of their nature. That's why fights can last for hours until one dog gives up or dies in the ring. In this business, the mark of a true warrior. He'll fight to the death. He'll fight to the death. He won't quit. He won't quit. This is nasty business. This is combat. People may argue over whether dog fighting is really a sport, but it certainly is a business a $500 million a year business, according to investigators. Big time dog men have dogs to sell, dogs they hire out for stud, and of course, dogs to fight, in bouts with formal contracts for big dollars. The most I've ever seen with my own eyes was 60,000. One fight? Yeah. Dog fighting used to be one of those things that the authorities didn't pay much attention to. But these days, it's against the law in all 50 states. In Louisiana, two years ago, a new task force raided the compound of a suspected up-and-coming dog man. The man was nowhere to be found. Suspect left in his truck. We're going to go clear the back. But what Trooper Mac Dickinson and his team did find revealed a lot about how this underground business works. If you notice, when we walk back here, you can't even see this place from the road. It's hidden back here, not to mention the dogs are tethered by these heavy chains in close proximity with, with each other. Also, he's got a little spring pole on the side that he what, hangs. What's the spring pole? It's a pole the dogs hang from to strengthen their jaw, and he'll put an animal hide on it or whatever, to get him used to bite into another animal. 
It looked like a scene from Dog Deliverance in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And while Dog may be man's best friend, it's not always true the other way around. The dog is standing in its own feces and mud. It's got no food. Is, is that part of what makes them mean and is that intentional? Most of the times I'll have them out here like this in the open. It makes them more aggressive. The police also found what they believe to be vials of muscle building steroids. It's all part of the training routine dog men use before a fight. Every day you spend time with that dog, you feed that dog twice a day. You, you, you walk him, you weigh him, you, you, you and him, y'all become buddies. And being buddies means finding sparring partners for their dogs to sharpen their skills. They stole it right out of the back. They stole your dog right out of the backyard. To try to teach another dog how to kill. And they are almost very successful. Chris Seiler's puppy, Jasmine, disappeared from his home in Gosha, Mississippi, one night in July 2007. He drove all over town trying to find her, but just when he'd lost hope, he saw Jasmine struggling to get back home herself. She was bleeding all over the place. I mean, there was blood running down her face, down her chest, down her legs, on her stomach. When you saw her limping up the road? I started crying. I mean, I, I, I couldn't hold it together. She was in a fight. So she was bitten by some other dog. Mm -hmm. No question about that. No question about that. Bill McDevitt, a local vet, saved Jasmine's life and replaced a hip that had been shattered, not by another dog, but by a dog man, McDevitt thinks, to make sure Jasmine couldn't put up too much of a fight. The idea that somebody would throw this dog into uh, the ring with a killer fighting dog, what do you make of that? Well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to believe it. You're a low-life piece of shit, pardon me. After a week in the hospital, Jasmine was reunited with Chris. The vet said she would never regain full use of her leg, but in the brutal world of dog fighting, she's one of the lucky ones. This pet never made it back home. Her mouth was duct taped shut by a dog man to make her defenseless, so his fighting dog could learn how to kill. It's a dirty business and not an easy one for the authorities to root out. Dog fighters are obsessive about secrecy, even among their own. They usually they? don't let them know until an hour or two before when they have dog fights, and they change locations quite often, and that's to prevent detection. What kind of places do they fight dogs at? A anywhere from warehouses to abandoned houses, fields. And people are there uh, betting, sharing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very disturbing. Authorities in Mississippi got a rare glimpse at a fight scene when they stumbled onto the action here. Like any true sporting arena, there were lights, a locker room, even a concession stand. There were also plenty of medical supplies. After all, in this business, the winning dogs are worth patching up. The losers, assuming they survive, are a different story. <laughs> this undercover footage shows two Georgia dogmen who pit their dogs against each other looking for signs of weakness. What did he do wrong? Everything. He's pretty dog. Pretty dog sick. The dog man grabs a rifle and a dog and heads for the woods. Moments later, he returns alone. Yeah. Well, at least he didn't take one shot. Oh. <laughs> it's nothing personal, dog fighters say. Just business. You love those dogs. I still do. And you believe they loved you? Yes. But if the dog was a quitter, if he just couldn't win, you take him behind the barn and put a bullet in his head. He quit once, he's going to quit again. So in order for me to keep the quality of dogs where I want it, he's got to be culled out. In other words, they won't let dogs that quit reproduce. That would only mean more quitters, and that would be bad for business. These pups had championship blood in them. Based on the uh, dog fights he's won in the past, these dogs have become more and more valuable. He sells these dogs for fighting. So people will pay up to a thousand dollars a dog, sometimes more. Not anymore. These dogs, like their parents out back, were rounded up by the SPCA and taken to the local shelter, where they were cleaned up and cared for. That's the good news. What happens to them now? 
the dogs are, are, are more than likely going to be euthanized because the law considers them a danger to society. It's the policy at many shelters around the country, like this one in Illinois, where dogs seized from a fighting ring are considered too dangerous to put up for adoption. This guy had puncture wounds on his skull. Part of his jaw was swollen up from infection. And I'd rather see an animal peacefully put to sleep than be put through all that abuse. Basically, you're going to just take the arm. They didn't even feel that. If you can see, there's no response. You can let off, please. It's a good boy. Such a good boy. Oh, are you getting tired? It's okay, big guy. It's okay. Dozens of dog fighting rings are busted each year, and thousands of dogs are put to death at shelters like this. But it was one particular raid in Virginia, a raid that seized more than 65 dogs, that also seized national attention to the bloody business of dog fighting. Yes, that raid involving America's most notorious dog man. Now to the scandal that has rocked pro football. Atlanta Falcons quarterback Michael Vick has been indicted by a federal grand jury. For his role in a dog fighting operation. Michael Vick was a bright, bright spotlight that lit up a horrific form of animal abuse that people knew existed but didn't think about. You're saying some good has come from the Michael Vick case? A lot of good has come from the Michael Vick case. John Goodwin is the dogfighting expert at the Humane Society of the United States. He says that news reports about Michael Vick's dogfighting ring raised such a public outcry that police departments around the country suddenly mobilized to fight a crime that used to be a low priority. You're going to take these things right here called breaking sticks. And Goodwin has spent much of the past two years traveling around the country, training local police officers on the ins and outs of dogfighting. We've had thousands more law enforcement officers come through our training programs after Vic than before. A lot of these police officers realize this is something the public wants to see action on. And they have. In July, authorities across eight states raided 22 different locations, rescuing 450 dogs in what was the biggest dog fighting bust ever in this country. But the new interest in shutting down dog fighting has driven the operations even deeper underground, making the job of catching the dogmen even more difficult. We've heard reports about dog fighters who, instead of having a bunch of spectators present, would have webcams set up. There was one dog fight in the back of an 18-wheeler. Excuse me? Th there in was, the back of a truck? Well, that was the first time that I had ever heard of uh, anything quite like that. And now I have to pay the consequences for it. Thanks to Michael Vick, if that's the right way to put it, there is a massive new push to show 1-800 tip lines. We have a possible lead on a dog fight. And who's the newest, most prominent Humane Society spokesman against dog fighting? None other than Michael Vick, who speaks to kids in inner cities where the illegal sport so is on the rise. I don't want no person in this room to end up in prison behind us. The idea that Michael Vick is the model citizen for let's stop this kind of thing, that's ironic to say the least. Time will tell. He said that that's what he wants to do. And if he can save far more animals than he killed, that'll be progress. Dogs the same. Dogs won't change, won't change in 200 years. People change. It's like with the dogs, you know what I mean? You've got a dog that'll keep on going even though it's dead. And then you know that the puppies that come from that dog, you can breed them because they're fighters. It's got to be like that with people as well. Got to breed a strong race again. You're on your own. It's a skinhead once you're over there. You haven't really got any mates. It's all tribalism. I've got nothing to prove anymore. I'm just doing my living. That, if you like, is my job. And if you win, you win. If you lose, you suffer.